Well, this is our next project. We have to replace the heater core on the 9320 about a month or so ago. Andrew was spreading manure with this. He said it was getting hot, and next thing you know, they're going through coolant left and right. We thought we actually had a head gasket gone or something on it, and then they later found out that the heater core was leaking. So we're gonna go ahead and dive into it here. We have to take the panel off the back of the cab and we need to work at the back side of the cab and then we need to work at uh, things from the inside as well. So let's go ahead and dive into this here and uh, we'll just kind of see what kind of fun we can have uh, replacing that heater car. We're gonna replace a blower motor as well and uh we ended up getting this washed before we pulled it into the shop here uh the bush hog the last piece of machinery that we worked on that was washed as well so you guys should be proud saying that we should wash everything before we bring it in it just only happened to work out that way most of the time we don't have the three or four hours that it takes to wash something uh before we work on it. We need to work on it, get it out the door, and then get the next item in so that we can get the previous piece back in service. So, we're gonna have at it here. Well, we have the back of the um, cab taken off here, and this does not need a heater core. The heater core is right inside, it's right here. And what we actually had was just a blown hose. So we're gonna go ahead and replace these uh, heater hoses. There's one that's, that's this one that goes down in through the floor somehow here. I think it was like that. And then uh, there's another straight piece and then another elbow. So there's three hoses that we're gonna have to replace and then that's gonna take care of that problem there and the boys just pulled the manure pump in here that needs to be rebuilt and we've videoed this thing here before now just cut a hole cut a hole in the fan blade hook the clevis on yeah so this needs a new fan and then it needs this new housing and in order to do that, this shaft has to be replaced. We've got a hole in here that we're just gonna put a Band-Aid on for now. And then in a couple of months, we're going to have to replace this tube here. We're at least gonna have to replace this bottom section. I've done that before too, to where we've cut it off here and have just replaced this bottom portion. So what they're gonna do, is they are gonna cut a hole in this fan, hook a clevis on it, and they're gonna yank this shaft out. Uh, they have to put a good amount of force on it because what there is is a couple of wooden blocks in here. There's only supposed to be one, but we put two in that kind of stabilizes the shaft. And that wood swells up, and when it swells up, it comes out hard. These are the wooden blocks right here that need to be pulled out so we'll join back up with you when we start putting this back together here new bottom to the spreader that came So that's what this looks like all apart and the marine bearing is right here we've got a new one over on the floor and that rides right about here and what had happened is, is the jam bolts came out to hold that marine bearing in and that marine bearing walked up it actually walked up to about there maybe either that or the block of wood made that mark but at any rate that allowed that shaft to get down to about an inch in diameter. And this is what the new marine bearing looks like. 
And this has grooves in it. It has somewhat of a spiraled groove and the idea of it is the manure is supposed to work into that and kind of pass through it to keep this cooled down and that marine part of the bearing rides on this part of the fan which comes up to about here and it's uh, wide enough to just fit that marine bearing. So this pump should pump a lot better once uh, all the new parts get put into it here. And the housing is wore out quite a bit. The throat area right here should be out to about there and it is all wore off. So it's a combination of the manure, the amount of manure that's gone through it and of course the sand that just kind of works at everything here and wears things out. So he's just putting a drive yoke on, that'll go up onto the gearbox up top and then the assembly of all this will start to uh, happen here momentarily. Well, these guys are just about done with this pump here. Got the new fan on there. And the other day they ended up putting a new bottom cone on here and they ended up replacing this whole assembly here and this spout here actually comes out to here but it gets down real small towards the end they were actually plugging it so jason just cut the end off so that it had a little more of a wide open end on it so that it wouldn't plug and then he's got this bottom side all patched up here trying to gain a few more miles out of it and uh, this is getting ready to go back in the drink here. They're just putting the bottom panel on it now. And then they'll be ready to pump some poo. This is the bottom cover. That was on there, it's got a hole in it right there. And uh, should be good, right? Now we've had trouble with these fan blades hitting the housing before. Did this one? How was it? Nice. Well, nice. Once we got to a certain point, I mean, yeah, really easy. we've had the damn fan blades hit the back side of that before. You'd have to cut the fan blades off because when they welded those fan blades on, they had one stick out a little bit. So. What's that? Yeah, that was Alex pulling out. <laughs> Get her going. All right, so anyone, I ended up going down to Kaz, Cortland. I had to pick up a heater hose for this. And I ended up picking up a water pump for it as well. These water pumps. Oh, they say every four to 5,000 hours. You should replace them. And if I remember right, this tractor's got about 11,000 hours on it. So I figured we'd go ahead and change out the water pump. What usually happens to these is the bearings go on the front end and it'll lock up the gear on it. It usually takes out the timing gears on the front of the engine and it ends up ruining everything. So rather than have that risk, we'll just go ahead and replace it. This is not the original water pump. This has been replaced before being that it is yellow. And we probably should do the same thing to the 9410. I don't know if it's an exact problem anymore, but um, they had advised every four to 5,000 hours to uh, replace the 
So we're gonna drop the coolant and we'll get the back end of it put back together. Then we'll swap out this water pump. Well, Andrew and Ben are working on cleaning some of the solids out of the uh, lagoon here. Ben just got done loading this one spreader. And you can see what this material looks like here. That's pretty solid, isn't it, Bernard? Yeah. Just take and uh, try to scoop that. Just take the solids. Don't try to push any liquids with it and then you'll have a pathway made right to it but it's looks like it's working pretty good yeah they'll pump it probably tomorrow so how's that spreader working is it throwing it yeah. farther with that farther than that throat panel on there i've got a new floor to put in there that came there yesterday so yeah but you could see what he's got loaded in the spreader if this was liquid material that wouldn't be bridged up like it is but uh being that it's solid it'll round itself right up well i better get out of the way andrew's gonna be here in a minute Well, I just got to order the Cleverly Farm and what they're doing is they are moving the straw home. That is piled inside this barn here. There's about a hundred, about 150 bales left in here and we're trying to get this all moved now so that we can have it all back to the farm before the roads get crappy again not snowing or anything right now it's just uh it's the end of december and we had wheat on this farm when we bailed the straw over here we ended up piling it directly over into this barn because we didn't have enough room at home and now that we have used enough straw out of the hay barn we have room for it so we thought we'd move it here now and this telehandler's been over here uh, since we tore that barn down and we'd like to kind of get it home so Jared is loading uh, Alex here right now and she is just about loaded Alex Tim Richard and um, Sarah are driving truck and uh, Nate's putting them away so we'll head on back to the farm and uh, show you what the uh, operation looks like back there the barn is just about full at home here again they were putting bales away at home with the skid steer and now they are starting to put them away with the other telehandler so Jared has Alex about loaded and then he'll start loading up Richard he is sitting on deck right there we still haven't done anything with this window yet, if anybody is interested. So we'll go ahead and head on back to the farm here. Well, we'll head back to the farm. My brother ended up helping me load that window in the back of this truck didn't get any takers on that I'll have to put the 
part number to that window in the description again. So my father ended up adding on to the side of this road down here so that the tractor trailers would stay out of this ditch. He's got that done. He added like 10 or 12 feet on there or something. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're back here. I'm helping Nate stack these bales up. We've got five rows. We started putting the fifth and the sixth bale up on the four that he's been stacking here thus far. And I've been pushing them back in. I've got this third row started. We need to leave this side of the hay barn open for uh, hay. We have a tractor trailer. A guy that brings tractor trailer loads of hay every so often and he stacks them in there and then we start feeding it so sarah's dumping a load here now and i don't know if she has to go back or not they are almost done and uh looks like she has the hoist up about far enough and that load's empty i don't know if she's got another one up in there or not yeah got like three left gotta go up a little higher oh there's a mouse running oh sam sam right there boom go wonder how he fared Let's see if we can see him again no i don't see him i don't know if sarah's gonna gonna stop here we'll ask her what she has left She doesn't want to talk. Roll the window down. <laughs> Don't you want to talk? No. no. Hey, do you have to go back there again? Huh? You don't have to? Oh, you do. Okay. Yeah, you better check with them. It's getting close. So. All right. So what Nate is doing is he stack them in, in doubles and then um, I can grab them push them on top or put them in and then once he gets them all stacked in doubles and he starts carrying them in as well but we need to get the fifth and sixth bale up on top to maximize our space here and the Sun is starting to go down so we got to get after it here Well, now we have another interruption. They got the straw piled away, and now we're working on this skid steer. It has a problem with the actuator that runs the detach tabs that enable you to get the take the bucket on and off. I thought it was gonna have a broken wire in this hydraulic hose here, but what we actually have wrong is the wire is broke on the motor itself and you can kind of see it right there so i have a spare actuator here um this one we had replaced a while ago and we um didn't diagnose it correctly and uh we're going to be able to put that one in but however this does not go to this model skid steer it seems to be the right length and everything and it works we can put that one in but before we do that we're going to try to get this apart see if we can't maybe add on to uh, that wire and this wire here uh, is ready to uh, break as well these actuators are a little salty they're i don't know seven or eight hundred bucks I'm not sure offhand uh, exactly how much they are but they are rather expensive so we're gonna take this apart and see if we can't maybe uh, solder a new wire on there we might not be able to get this apart but we're gonna try all right we went ahead and put this other actuator on there I had to cut the plug off and um, connect the plug off of the other actuator so that we could get this one to plug into 
the wire harness that's already on there Garrett has swapped out the cutting edge on the bucket that is just a six foot material handling bucket and that cutting edge needed replaced we have the old actuator here the other actuator the one that was on it we've got that disassembled we've got the little electric motor here and we have the end to the motor right here i'm going to try to solder a new wire on there this wire is not in the greatest shape either so we'll we'll try to get two brand new wires on there then we can use this actuator for a spare these actuators are uh, 895 dollars so we need to try to uh, cobble this back together and uh, have it as a spare so we'll go ahead and put this cover back on the back side of this tool carrier and we'll get this thing rolled out the door here All right, we've got the skid steer done. Now we're going to toy around with this electric motor that's for the actuator on that skid steer. See if I can't get this uh, taken apart and solder a couple of new wires on there. All right, we've got our soldering iron plugged in here. I've got this wet sponge and that's gonna clean my wire tip off. See if we can't maybe keep this up, get the wire off of here.
All right, so we have the old terminal wire removed and this wire broke off right at the back side of this motor cover here. So I've got a new wire I don't have. Uh, we're gonna use green and red uh, this time around. So I've got a little bit of solder left uh, right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole through it, get the wire up through, and then mash out the wire on top and then re-solder the new wire to the existing solder that is there. Now, now what we have is a hole drilled through that I'm going to be able to send this new wire up through. I've got it right up to the top. Now we're just going to kind of separate these braids out a little bit. And I'm going to push some solder over on top of the wires and kind of push that all all together with some new solder. All right, we have that soldered uh, back on there. Now this red wire, I thought, um, was broken as well, and it is not. Um, it was just the black paint or whatever. That I seen, that was um, missing from that. So now we'll go ahead and we'll put this motor back together and we'll have this one uh, for a spare. All right, so we've got this motor back together. I've got some leads hooked up to it and we're going to test it on this 12 volt battery here before we actually put it back together uh, with the rest of the actuator here. So I ended up putting a black line on the shaft there. I don't know if you can exactly see it all that well, but we'll go ahead and test fire it on this battery here and we'll make sure it works. And bingo. I don't know if you can see that shaft turning or not. It's the one direction. Now go in the other direction with it. And there we have it. Now we'll put the rest of the actuator back together here. Then we'll be able to 
Um, throw this up on the shelf upstairs and we'll be able to use it when the next skid steer goes down. All right, so we have this actuator ready to uh, bolt back together. We just got to put the cover on. That's what everything looks like with all the little gears on there. And then we'll wrap a big zip tie around this. Then we can throw it on the shelf and it will be ready for the next time we need one. All right, so this is all ready to go. We can throw that up on the shelf now. I started with the soldering iron and that would not remove uh, the old solder. So I just end up, ended up using this butane torch and it got the solder hot enough that it allowed this uh, wire to be pulled out of the puddle of solder. And that of course, once I pulled the wire out, that puddle of solder closed back up again. Then what I did so that I didn't have to remove all of the solder, I drilled a hole through the solder, pushed the wire up through, flattened out the uh, braided wire, and then we put a new puddle of solder on top of the solder that was already there. So this is good to go again here. Again, this uh, actuator is $895, and it is usable uh, other than that broken wire on there. Um, it took a little while to fix, but at least we've saved ourselves a little bit of dough here. So we'll go ahead and throw this up on the shelf, and now we can get working on the 9320. Well, we have gone as far as we can go with the heater core. This is the hose that blew here. Kaz Equipment had this in stock. However, I need two more hoses. I need the one that comes off this heater line that goes to the valve. And then I need this one here that comes off of the heater core and goes to the valve. The valve is three quarter. The heater core is five eighths. The line here is five eighths. I did not recognize that right off the bat. I ended up getting this hose down to Napa. This is three quarter. It will fit the valve, however, it is not going to fit the heater core. So we are going to have to wait uh, for those hoses. You can kind of see that this end here has got a little bit of a bell on it because it is larger on one end than it is the other. The, it is uh, New Year's Eve now. Uh, yesterday, the day before New Year's Eve, they were not able to order this stuff. Well, they could have ordered it, but John Deere was shut down Thursday and Friday, along with tomorrow, which is New Year's Day. And we wouldn't see these parts until Tuesday, possibly Wednesday, if they were ordered yesterday. So if we order them Monday, we'll get them in the same time frame that if, uh, compared to if we ordered them yesterday so we have the lines voice gripped off here under the tractor and therefore that's why there's no coolant leaking out here right now and now what we're going to do is we're going to swap out that water pump we can very carefully put this cover back up on the cab with minimal uh, bolts in it and if we so choose to pull this out of the shop we'll pull it out of the shop all right, we've got the coolant all drained and uh, the hoses are unhooked from it. Now we just need to take out the three bolts here that hold the water pump on. And then we'll get this out of there, get the fittings moved over to the new water pump and we'll bolt the new one in there. Okay, we are ready to just pluck this out of there. I unbolted the back half just so that I could get that inside bolt out. There. That's all it is. So we'll go over to the bench and swap out our fitting. Actually I could put the fittings right on the new water pump right with it in there and then it's kind of 
held in place. So we just clean this up a little bit and bolt the new one on there. All right, we have both water pumps on the bench here. This is the uh, new one here. And then this one we've got to send back to them. Now there's nothing wrong uh, with this water pump. However, they do advise every four to 6,000 hours to change these out. I don't know if the bearings end up going and it ends up, this gear ends up wallering in there and then it takes your front timing gears out and it ruins the engine or uh, what actually goes on with these, but that has been a problem. And this tractor's got 12,125 hours on it. So we'll go ahead and throw this in there. This back bolt is a real mongrel on this back side. That's why I have the back half of the water pump removed. So let's see if we can't muscle that one bolt in there and get it bolted into place. Well, this is the last fitting that we have to put into the pump here. This fitting hooks the overflow reservoir up to the water pump, top tank rather. Okay, got everything hooked up, tightened up. Now we just got to fill it with coolant and hopefully we don't have any leaks here. Okay, we are just about ready to wrap this job up for now. We do have to hook some hoses up to the heater car. I ended up uh, running a wire up to the start solenoid here. You can see that red wire right there. And I ran that along the uh, wire harness here. And I found a spot in the cab to go through the floorboard. And I came up through about where the steering column goes down through the floor. And what I was going to do is I was going to put a start button in here, right down in here run power to it on one side and then when you hit the button it will send power to the start solenoid to engage as a starter. Uh, the problem that we're having with this tractor is the start wire from the switch, from the switch to, I think it goes from the switch to the ECU and then back out of the ECU to the starter is broke somewhere. So rather than try to chase that wire all the way around and try to figure out where it is exactly broke at broke at we're just going to uh stab into this one wire off the key switch so i've got the test light plugged into the wire that we're going to cut we're going to cut this wire here and then we're going to join this wire to it and then when you hit the key switch right now it's not going to start so the key is in the off position then we are going to it's in the accessory mode now 
and then we go to start you can see the test light lights up but the tractor's not starting uh, because we don't have this wire hooked up so we're going to go ahead and splice this into there and then i can get the uh, steering column uh, back together now this tractor has 12,125 hours on it uh, these Hour meters on these tractors only have uh, four digits plus the tenths, and once it gets to 10,000, it rolls over again. So being that this tractor is nearly 18 years old, it's just not really worth chasing down this wire problem when we can just kind of cut the wires and, and dive into it here. So it's just stuff that you have to do. Once this stuff gets some age on her, so it's going to be perfectly fine running uh, this wiring the way we're running it because it's going to be protected uh, when you have the key off. There's not going to be any power to this. However, if I ran power to a start button, that start button would have power on it all the time unless I dove into a keyed uh, circuit which that would be the smart thing to do but then you got to find one of them as well so we're just going to do it this way so we'll cut the wires get it spliced in and then we'll uh start buttoning this back up Just have to uh, zip tie that up. No more starting it with a screwdriver. So we're going to go ahead and zip tie these wires up, and then what I need to do is uh, get this bezel back around the uh, steering column here. Now this unit here is the auto steer unit. This actually turns the steering wheel itself. Um, these older tractors that didn't have the steer motors on them to work right off a of Green Star, you use these units here. Um, I can use this in the combine as well. However, um, We've only used it a couple of times in there. So let's go ahead and get this buttoned up and uh, get this tractor out of here. gonna do it for this video we will catch it the next one I guess I'm gonna go ahead and park this one uh, park this tractor for now and in a few days we'll have to pull it back in once the parts come in